how do you feel about those days? You know, looking at these these old pictures. I don't know. I can't, you know, I can't really remember that much about it. I remember that, that sort of wheelchair thing, uh, nicking that out the the room and bombing down the hills on that like a go kart. But that's about it. How did you feel about your dad during those days? Oh, his dad, you know, nothing more, nothing as, less. As you grew older. I know it's difficult here. Well, I mean, it was dad at first, and it became Beatle, you know, and then dad again. It's one of those strange situations. Cos um, roller. That's great. Oh, that was, that that was the, interesting. The time, time, wasn't it? time. You went off to Scotland then? Oh, gosh, that, that was, was an interesting That was thing, when I went to it? Ascot for the weekend, and mm. uh, Dad didn't tell you we were, we were going off to Scotland, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And then um, we had a quick car crash up there. But I remember you telling me something very strange about that accident. But uh, I was the only one that wasn't hurt in the crash. Everybody had a facial scar, you know, Dad had one along the bottom, Yoko had one at the top, and uh, Kyoko, Yoko's daughter, had a gash all across here, and I didn't have a cut on me at all. And they were all knocked out, and, I mean, what did I say to you? What was it? I remember it very clearly. You yeah. said that the reason, Mum, that nothing happened to me was that Grandad lifted me off the back seat just as the car was about to crash. And you'd never met your Grandad. Yeah, that's a bit... <sighs> that weird. As time went on and you went off to America, mm. how did your relationship with your dad develop then? Um, well, I don't know. It sort of um, built up like a... Like a, an, uh, it was more like a wise uncle, you know, sort of relationship, how it started off. Because I was sitting there listening to what he was saying, you know, not saying anything. And then it, uh, then we start getting into a proper father and son talk, and, you know. What are your feelings about Yoko? Um, well, I respect her a lot for, uh, in ways, um, I suppose, for because she's been with Dad for such a long time. And, uh, you, know, uh, she's, <laughs> you know, she's OK once in a while. When, when we meet, whenever we get a chance to meet, we have a nice chat. Uh, that's about it, really, you know. I know it's a difficult subject. And I wasn't with you at the time. And I wish I had been there to tell you. Can you tell me how, what were your feelings at the time you heard of your father's death? Uh, you, you can't explain it. You can't, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's too much. But, um, I mean, I, ha I felt I had to say, I mean, stay strong, you know. Because, uh, I mean, you'd known him more than I had, and longer. And, uh, had to but keep you going through it, you know. But do you, you don't feel any bitterness or hate about it, do you? Uh, what, on the, on the, the guy who did it? Yes, the whole act of... of well, obviously, murder. there was uh, a bit of anger crushed up inside, you know, but um, there's nothing I could do about it. You've told me about this story when you were in America, mm. two years before your dad died, about the feather. Yeah. Can you tell me more about that? Not really. <laughs> no, he just said that if he was to pop off one day or whatever, but, uh, that um, that if there was a way of getting through to me, uh, he'd uh, float a white feather across the room, not down or anything, just straight across. So I've been looking now and then for signs, but um, I think if you look too much, you're not going to find it. You know, just let it happen. If it does, it does. If it doesn't. Do you believe in life after death? Yeah, I think there's something going on up there.